Hi, everyone. I'm very happy to see so many faces that are no longer hungry. I hope lunch was nice. Um, and I hope that while I speak, I'll gather more of a crowd from the outside, but we'll see about that. So what we're going to discuss today is actually our view about the financial services in a new age. And the new age is the age of crypto. I mean, we're all like-minded individuals here, and in one way or another, we all work in blockchain-based companies and in crypto. So at crypto.com, we believe that it's your basic human right to control your money, your identity, and your data. And what we're doing is we're trying to put cryptocurrency in every wallet. And the way we're doing it is by being based in an ecosystem that currently exists. Crypto services are currently based on traditional finance. We are very heavily leaning on products that currently exist because the basic human needs for financial services haven't changed that much. If you think about the needs that we currently have and we have to address, we definitely have to earn money. We have to find a way to spend our money. We have to send transfers here and there. Then some of us have to fulfill our needs to invest our money and to save our money. So what is the infrastructure doing right now? How is, how is crypto addressing these needs? We are clearly leaning on what the financial services currently offer. However, we are providing it in a totally new system. We're providing this on a blockchain. And how does that differ from the traditional payment systems or from the traditional finance systems? Well, first of all, we increase the level of transparency to um, insurmountable um, amount, actually, of transparency on blockchain transactions. Then when you think of it, transactions are much faster. I have recently had a conversation with one of my colleagues, um, and we were discussing being paid in crypto. And one of the biggest benefits of being paid in crypto was actually the speed of your transaction. Then it was the ability to invest your salary and sometimes lose a portion of it, as it is today, when the markets are crashing, but sometimes actually make a really nice profit out of it. So transactions are fast. Transactions are secure. There is already an institutional-grade security that is available on the market, and a lot of companies are using it and transactions are transparent. So if we think about the needs that we need to address, savings is probably the most popular one. So ever since early age, we have always been told that you have to study hard, get a job, and then get a salary and save a portion of that salary into your savings account, right? Because you never know, you may need it for a rainy day, or you may as well have a lot of kids and you have to pay them through college. So how is the crypto industry ad ad um, addressing right now the needs of savings for users? We have come up with a very interesting solution which is existing from the very early ages of crypto, and this is staking. Staking um, took the form as a consensus mechanism and usually required proof of staking, right? So you had to lock up your coins in exchange of which you're going to get some interest on your coins. Recently, there are a lot of companies that have started offering soft staking, which actually allows you to have no lockup on your coins. You're getting daily interest. And on top, of that, on top of that, some companies are also paying you interest on your whole wallet balance, even on transactions that are currently in order. At Crypto.com, we have recently launched an exchange that has a soft staking mechanism. So what we're allowing to do, customers to do is exactly that. We pay interest daily based on the exchange wallet. There is no lockup whatsoever. And we are allowing all of your transactions or all of your coins to be counted when we pay interest. So anything in order, any locked coins that you have for syndicate events, we are paying interest on that. There are a number of services that also mimic, in a way, the traditional deposits. And at crypto.com, we have a wallet an application, and that application allows you to keep your crypto in deposit, which may be a very good idea right now. So you may not want to sell when the market crashes. You may want to put your crypto in deposit. And there are several companies that offer deposit products right now. They literally behave like regular banking deposits, so very familiar product. Anyone can use it. 
The only difference is they actually pay really good interest compared to your regular deposits. And anyone who lives in Europe and stores their money, their fiat money in Euro, knows that Euro has negative interest. So what's the interest of people to actually store their fiat? Another very basic financial need is lending. So a lot of us are familiar with traditional lending products, right? And when we speak of crypto, we have actually started offering lending services as probably one of the first products available on exchanges, which is margin trading. So margin trading is typically accessible and a product used by more sophisticated investors. But on the other hand, there are a number of companies who already provide lending services that are based on, let's say, secured collateral or on a deposit that you're keeping in the company. Crypto.com is one such example. We have a lending product in our application where you can deposit your coins and you can get 50% of your coins, of the value of your coins, into a stable coin. And then with that loan, you can buy more crypto because the market is simply calling for it. Or you can take it to fiat and, and just use it with your card or just do a bank withdrawal, whatever really pleases you. Another very essential need when we speak of traditional needs is obviously the need to spend. And in crypto, you can look at it two ways. So there is always the payment cards, which are backed by crypto and which typically work as a traditional prepaid card, and we, know, we all know how those work. But then there is a whole new thing, which is the ecosystem, the infrastructure that we have to build, build for merchants and for payers to be able to pay and receive money natively in crypto. So what are we doing in that respect? We have recently launched Crypto.com Pay. It is based on our own blockchain, and it allows merchants to accept transactions in crypto natively. So they get paid same day settlements for the first six months are free of charge. They get to accept cryptocurrencies. We get to have customers pay with their crypto.com wallets in cryptocurrencies. And it's not just us addressing this need on the market. There are plenty of other players that are actually providing services like that. When we speak of cards, these have the real potential to become mainstream on the market. Why is that? Because cards are something that everybody is familiar with. Your mom knows how to use a card, your grandma knows how to use a card, we all use them in our daily lives. Which means that the more companies are entered, entering into that space, the more it will become mainstream and the more users we will get to learn how to use crypto. One of my favorite financial needs when it comes to crypto is, is actually investing, investing and trading. Um, so investing is typically, I would say, a behavior or has been a privilege of the higher educated. In the traditional finance world, you would never see an unbanked person that has invested in stock options. But I'm very happy to see that blockchain has already changed that. And it has changed it thanks to the exchanges, because if you think about it, um, most of the people who had first gained any kind of digital assets have actually kept those assets on a digital exchange and have probably traded those assets. Some of us have traded more speculatively, others are more professional investors and they have actually had proper trading strategies. Whatever the case, Trading has become mainstream thanks to blockchain and thanks to the exchanges. So apart from the very vanilla spot trading, there are plenty of instruments. In fact, there is an explosion of derivatives on the market right now. Once this was the space reserved for only a handful of exchanges. But recently, we can see a lot of exchanges offering futures, offering options, Offering even perpetual swaps, this has been the hit on the market for the past couple of months from what I can see. Then there are a number of players out there who are issuing ETFs and um, they're backed by crypto. There are a number of companies looking into the security token offerings. And regardless of the case, regardless of the company, some, some of those services require certain licenses or certain partnerships. Some of those services are offered across the board to all sorts of investors. You can, we can see that this market is becoming very, very competitive and there are more and more services added by exchanges 
and recently by other players as well. So when we speak of trading and investing, apart from retail, we have to obviously address the institutions, right? And um, from our perspective, at least, 2019 has been the year of institutional investing. So um, I'm, I'm going to give you a number. So I was, I was digging into statistics of what is the financial literacy of, of people in Europe and how many of us are actually investing on the secondary stock market. And um, according to Statista, for 2020, so this year, only 5.1% of all the British people have invested on the stock market. On the other hand, in 2019, more than 22% of the institutional investors have had some digital assets in their portfolio. Why is this fantastic news? It's fantastic news because the infrastructure does not still allow the institutions to, to actually trade digital assets the way they, they are required to trade them, because institutions are normally managing funds of customers, and with that amount of assets under management, they have to rely on sturdy security, they have to make sure that there is no regulatory controversy when they're using a product, they have to make sure that any transaction they're performing is sitting on a platform that has at least an institutional grade security right. For that matter, Crypto.com is the first company that has obtained a CCSS Level 3 certification. This is the Cryptocurrency Security Standard Certification. Level 3 is the highest one that you can obtain. We have been GDPR compliant since day one, when the company started operating. We are PCI DSS Level 1 compliant and ISO 27001 across all platforms. So, as you can see, some players are putting a lot of emphasis on security, and this will help bring in institutional trades. Clearly, we have to work on providing quicker APIs, more financial instruments, which the exchanges are actually doing quite well already. And we have to make sure that there are enough order types and anything that the institution would consider favorable so that they can put more assets. And when they do that, when they put that liquidity into the digital assets market, it's going to be beneficial from, for all of us, even the retail customers. So looking at how every player on the market is currently working hand in hand to build the blocks of, gen of, of the new generation of financial institutions, the financial institutions based on blockchain, we know that there's going to be a lot of hurdles. Regulation is coming out in Europe. We're hearing that ESMA is going to take the Buffin approach when it comes to regulating cryptocurrencies, which eventually will mean that all cryptocurrencies will be considered financial instruments, which will eventually mean that we have to put a lot of effort and a lot of money getting compliant with those regulations to be able, able to service customers in, in Europe. Nevertheless, we're very happy to see that actually industry players are not giving up. They're coming up with new investment services, with new financial instruments. They're coming up with new ideas how to service the people who are in crypto and how to bring more people into the crypto world. At Crypto.com, we have been doing this since 2016. And we truly believe that it is time for Plan B. And if any of you have seen our ads on the London Tube, time for plan B. Please retweet that. Thank you very much. I wish you a lovely end of the conference.